We're back in the deadliest town in the Old West. This is Pioche, Nevada. And you'd be forgiven if you've never heard of Pioche, Nevada. It's a little bit in the middle of nowhere, but back in its day, Pioche was one of the biggest silver boom towns in Nevada, and according to legend, one of the most violent. Right now, I'm walking along Murderer's Row in Boot Hill Cemetery, and if local lore is to be believed, there are over 100 murderers and murder victims buried here in marked and unmarked graves. In fact, according to that legend, 72 murder victims were buried right here in Boot Hill before even one person died of natural causes here. Silver mines were located up in these mountains as early as 1864. That's right around the same time Mark Twain was up in Virginia City on the Comstock load. That's right during the height of the Civil War, right at the end of it where the silver from Nevada was basically funding the Union War effort. And although trouble with the natives here led to the mines being abandoned for a while by the 1870s, Pioche was home to 6,000 people, 78 saloons, and 34 brothels. A Pioche is way over in far kind of eastern Nevada, at least two or three hours outside of Las Vegas, way off the beaten path. But today we're gonna explore this old ghost town and see what's left of the Old West. Dude, look at this place. This is awesome. This is exactly the kind of western town I'm always hoping to find something old school, a little rough around the edges, but not totally touristed out. And Pioche fits the bill. Look at this place, this is incredible. Now, like I said, the early miners were having trouble here with the locals, with the Native Americans. But in 1869, the town site was purchased by a guy named Francois Pioche, which is where the town got its name. Frenchman, you know, Pioche. But of course, it's been Nevadaized into Pioche these days. And in those early days, this was such a rough and remote part of Nevada that they had to hire armed guards to sit on the mining sites, the mining claims. And by 1872, there were all these stories of guys sneaking up to some of the mining claims and killing the armed guards, and then people taking revenge on the killers of the armed guards. One of the gunmen that killed some of the guards was a guy named Michael Casey. And Michael Casey was owed a little bit of money by a man named Tom Gosson. So he shot Gosson, but before Gosson died, he left a $5,000 bounty to kill his killer, which meant Casey and another guy named Levy had a duel, a gunfight out here in the streets in Pioche, where Levy not only shot Casey, but then finished the job by clubbing him to death with his pistol. But then another guy came along and shot him through the face. So you can see how they filled up that Boot Hill Cemetery with murderers and shooters and violent guys who died with their boots on before regular people even had a chance to settle down out here. Dude, this place is awesome. I love small towns like this where you can stand in the middle of the road in the middle of the day. Looks like there's quite a few cool storefronts over here. This one's got all kinds of historic pictures. You got the little town library and the Lincoln County Historical Museum across the street. Looks like there's uh, cigars over here, a soda fountain, looks like some collectibles. Doesn't look like the collectible store is open today though. Actually, it looks like not much is open on Main Street today in Pioche, but part of that is because it's about 30 degrees out here. It was snowing earlier. And partly because, like I said, this place is in the middle of nowhere and the drive here is gorgeous. A lot of nothing but beautiful nothing. I'm looking in the windows here in the shop on Main Street. I thought it was maybe an antique store, but I don't see price tags. When you look inside, it almost looks like uh, maybe this is somebody's man cave, like their their collection, a home for their collection. I see motorcycles back there, big old coffee grinder. What is Mike Wolf from American Pickers own this place? What's going on? Dude, what do you think of Pioche so far, George? Yes, I brought my friend George here and my friend Tyler, but he went missing. It's a little cold. I don't know where you went. Yeah, he went to the car, dude. He's freezing. It's a little freezing. cold, but it's actually really, really nice. You like this? Feels good. Yeah. A little remote, a little exciting. The cold air's going right through my jacket, so this isn't helping. Oh, at all. nice! Right to the skin. <laughs> Look at this. There's only about a thousand people living in Pioche today, so as you can see. The gas station right here only has one pump. I think there's actually a second gas station somewhere else in town. But as we wandered through town this morning coming from our Airbnb, which I will show you guys later, it is epic. We noticed so much cool mining detritus, like old awesome mining stuff scattered throughout the town. Not the least of which is whatever's behind this little storefront right here. Look at this, George. Obviously this was some kind of little attraction or a little like old west uh, area for tourists to visit. But look at it now, nothing's going on over here. Oh, there's a sign on the window, Area 52. By the way, we are very close to Area 51, about an hour and a half or so, which is uh, not a very far distance for this vast region. Look at this, look at this little area over here, this little alley. It's got all kinds of signs that obviously 
came out of some of the different mines, like that's obviously U.S. lime, probably other minerals besides the old silver mines. Got all these wagon wheels up here chained up. This is exactly the kind of little clothes, old school tourist attraction you know was popular maybe in the 1950s or 60s, even up to the 80s and 90s, before people had phones and iPads. It's exactly the kind of place you know somebody with a passion for history and, you know, the local pioch Walt Disney wanted to build his own little frontier land, teach people about the Old West, and then it fell on hard times. Exactly the kind of place I'd love to buy and own one day. Picture me out here as an old man. Now this here's a bit of old cable with what which we pulled up the ore out of the mine. Dude, you know, look at this. This is cool. Obviously, they built an assortment of example miners' cabins and shacks up here. You got that little sign right there, a little outhouse. That's weird, outhouse on your front lawn. Look at that one. It's got the uh, metal siding, you know. They built those uh, shacks out of whatever they had. And this one, look at that lean-to. This is so cool. What I love about old mining towns is where they found the silver, they built the town. You know, they plop buildings right on the sides of steep hills and everything else. Wait a minute. Ronald Reagan? Well. Places like this hillside in Peoch or the hillsides of Virginia City, Nevada, or Jerome, Arizona, will still have all kinds of old small houses for miners and their families. Usually the well-to-do ones are the ones that survived that still dot the hillsides. You always have these crazy little alleys and stairways up the hills. That's what I love about finding the little gems in the Old West. Look at these little old mining houses. You know, little old mining town houses. Obviously, the miners in the early days would be in tents mostly, or shacks, or dugouts. But like I said, by 1872, 1873, there were 6,000 people living here. They established all kinds of businesses. This became the county seat of Lincoln County. Named, of course, for the recently martyred president, and civilization came out here to the desert. Speaking of civilization, it is freezing cold out here. It's about 35 degrees now at this point, and we're Right about noon, might be time to uh, head indoors somewhere and warm up a little bit. Hey, Hamilton Brown shoes, my great grandpa. Actually, my great great grandfather even also worked at Hamilton Brown in St. Louis. Weird. All right, looks like there's still a few saloons in town, but check this out the historic Silver Cafe, which one local told us was the oldest restaurant in Nevada, which I have no way of proving. Looks like the perfect place to grab a cup of coffee. I just wish the video rental side was open. All right, let's go in, dude. I need a cup of of hot coffee. Yeah, this place is so cute inside. Look, it says right there, Nevada's oldest cafe. Hmm, that is what I needed. Look at the steam coming off of that. What do you think of Pioch so far, Tyler? Super quaint. You enjoying Very it? Very small, a little chilly. Should have brought a bigger jacket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> oh yeah, what you got on there, George? Nothing. Lift that bun up, dude. Ready? A dry burger. Just like the old miners used to do. You like that title? A little burger action? Some little pickles burger action. Nice. Well, they weren't kidding. All right, well, we patronize the local cafe. We want to explore this whole town. Look at this across the street is the Overland Hotel and Saloon. It's another well-known spot for paranormal activity and stuff like that. The hotel, the original one built in the 18 diggities, burned down in 1946, somewhere around there, but was rebuilt in the same footprint. Now they have some themed like Victorian rooms up there. They got a bar downstairs, some other cool historic buildings down here. But before we get to all that, we're gonna head back up the street here because that museum is open for the moment, but it closes at 2 p.m., which seems really early until you remember that it's a weekday. It's uh, 30 degrees outside, and the crowds down here at the moment at least are not exactly throbbing. But here it is, we gotta check this place out. The Lincoln County Historical Museum. Oh, look at this, it's already good and we haven't even gone inside yet. Look at this, they got old Pappy here sitting in the window getting his boots shined in Pioch, Nevada. Let's get inside, dude, it's freezing. Hello, wrong side. Oh, wow, look at that. This is great, look at this, they got all these mineral specimens out here. Here's a bunch of ore on the thing. The girl at the uh, museum is telling us she's actually from Long Beach. Look at that, another Southern Californian. This is amazing. Look at the rock collection here. I mean, it makes sense. It's a, a mining town. And look, they have a black light mineral display. Ooh, look at this. I think if we push this little button. <gasps> Where's the black light? There it is, dude. Look at that. This rocks. Whoa, look at the size of that gun. A Revolutionary War flintlock. You got all kinds of pheasants and stuffed birds. Look at this old carriage here. 
an old stove. Like I was saying earlier, the whole town is littered with old remnants and old artifacts. So obviously they had uh, no shortage of objects to put in the museum. Oh, this is the Jim Deck Wire Collection. You know there are people who collect barbed wire. It's like a whole thing. Look at all that stuff. Bunch of more rocks and uh, gemstones. Here we have some fire equipment that came out of the old firehouse. Whoa, look at that old Stevens rifle. Winchester's in there. I don't know that much about guns. I only keep these guns around. But that's a Japanese army rifle. That second one down right there, so maybe a war trophy? Crazy. Look at those mining stock certificates or bonds or something. Then they've got this gentleman sitting back here. Uh, he would talk to you, but he's the strong, silent type. Man, check out all of the stuff. I love these local history museums, and this is a good one. Ooh, look at that. They got some anti-pain pills right there, and uh-oh. Watch out for those laxatives, the 666 cold tablets. You always think back then about how bad medicine was and how short everyone's lifespan was. There's no antibiotics, but they certainly had a lot of pills for all that. Look at that. There's still pills in some of these bottles. Oh my gosh. George, they've got an old cheese jar. An old cheese jar, George, for God's sake. Whoa, it's a linotype machine. That is crazy. I took printing in college. That sounds like a joke, but I actually did. Man, look at that. That's an early invention, dude. Is this what you learned on? Where you could no, this is where you could first like type a out a thing and it would make like whole rows of text instead Do of putting it in letter by letter. Oh, no, I'm not that old. Oh, yeah, you used to have to composite all the newspaper texts one character at a time until they invented machines like this. Look at that. Pio shot its own newspaper. Look at that, dude. The Daily Record. July 1st, 1876. George remembers. That was a good day. Good issue, huh? Oh, it's missing, dude. The part where the Ducks won back then. Look at that. $300 reward for the arrest and conviction of the person who robbed the Hamilton and P.O.H. stage. Speaking of old school, look at all these old school desks, Tyler. And look at the old books. It's too bad you never learned to read, dude. There's a whole, there's a whole world of books One waiting day. for you. Oh, and look at this. Do you know how to read? I only read Us Weekly. I love those Kardashians. This is what I like, dude, when you see the pictures. The old pictures of the town. Look at that, dude. It was bumping back then, Tyler. 34 brothels, dude. That's almost enough to keep you entertained. That seems like 33 too many for the size of that town. Can you have too many? You don't want to ask me that. George would be the guy to ask. He's too busy, dude. He's deep in the rocks now. Dang, dude. This reminds me I need to go to the dentist. Makes me really grateful he doesn't have a chair like that. Ugh. Look at that, dude. Six shooter found when digging a grave in Boot Hill Cemetery. They buried some of those people with their guns. Look at that. You can go to the afterlife, dude. That's for protection against ghosts. The other ghosts. <laughs> the ghost gun. <laughs> Man, they had a lot of guns. It's like the Matrix. I just realized all this is only half. Oh, whoa, look at the size of this room. Ooh, moving into the future. I'd like to present you this Gideon Bible so you don't go to hell. Lady, it's too late for me. War is hell. Excuse me, this is a family show. This is amazing, dude. Look at This is the town moving into the 20th century. Look at that television set right there, Tyler. You ever seen one of them? We're just right here, buddy, and have my cereal and watch the Jetsons. Yeah. <laughs> That's his George impersonation. Very accurate. A lot of old photos, a lot of information if you stop to read the signs. Wow, look at that. that looks like a World War I uniform. And look at this. What are you looking at? I was just wishing I was in the Great War. Oh my gosh, and this is one of my favorite things about local history museums. The giant dioramas. Look at this. Look at this happy couple. Oh, Ed, when you think you'll give me a new loom? There ain't nothing wrong with the loom you got. With the master chewing all the string. Why is that upsetting you? It's looming large in my mind. The only thing that looms large in here is you, devil woman. Whoa, we might want to give them some privacy. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have not seen one of these in a long time. You know what that is, George? You ever get whacked with one of those? No. A rug beater, dude. <laughs> you want to just get? You don't want to spank it for one of those. A uh, rug beater, huh? I could use one of them. John, use the spittoon. Well, that was awesome, dude. Fun and informative. And the lady in there was super, super friendly, super nice, telling us all about the events they have out here in the summer. And I guess actually even tonight, they're gonna have a pub crawl going on out here at all the different little bars. I guess they're gonna be going from the Nevada Club across the street over here to the 
Alamo Club. But since neither George or Tyler ever drinks, and I very, 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 very rarely ever have a drink, I'm not sure if we'll be crawling around here tonight or not. All right. Okay, there's so many cool little old buildings. Look at this. It used to be a little radio station. KBZB 98.9. I didn't even notice this earlier in the little roadside attraction over here. They've got an old school British telephone box. Man, I gotta get in there. I gotta make a call. There's no cell reception now. Wait. Hey, sorry. I'm waiting for a call in here. Are well, you gonna be long? It's already been 84 years. Typical. Dude, I don't know if I've mentioned this already, but look at this. There's a lot of really cool neon signs in town, and I hear at night they still light up. Down here at the foot of the town, past the Overland Hotel and Saloon I was talking about earlier, look at this. You got a couple of really cool, authentic old buildings here. Look at this guy right here, something club. Hard to read what's left of the sign up there. And then next door, you got the Entertainment District. Look at this, the historic gem theater right here. And next door, Thompson's Opera House. I don't know if you can tell, but that neon sign is on right now. That marquee, and it looks so cool. I can't even imagine how cool it looks at night. Look at this, they got newfangled social media over here. Check out the ticket booth on this guy. This is pretty incredible. Earlier, by the way, you could see mountains all over here, but it's snowing on the other side of the valley. Hopefully it doesn't come over here. But it has completely changed the landscape. This is great next to the Gem Theater, the Thompson's Opera House. Now, to my eye, this looks like a very old building indeed. Peeking through the window here, looks like there's all kinds of old Westy stuff, but it's closed at the moment. Most of the town is closed up. The gal at the museum was telling us like, you know, certain holiday weekends, it gets really busy out here. They have all kinds of events and they unlock everything. But at the moment, nobody wants to come to work and unlock one of these buildings to sit in there for for nobody at the moment, even the locals who look uh, grizzled and tough compared to us, keep saying it's awful cold outside today, so that's how you know it's really cold. Dude, this is cool, look at this. Whoa, a Yeti. <laughs> look at this old city garage, check that out. Wow, I don't know if that's somebody's like kind of fanboy sign up there, or this was actually a, a Ford authorized sales and service place at one time. That is definitely an old rock building. Might have been a stables before it was an automotive building, or not a stable, like a blacksmith or a livery uh, place. A lot of the old buildings in really old towns that handled horses and wagons and wagon repair and things like that were later converted to garages for your Model T and such. Like, look at this, I'm making all kinds of friends out here. What's up, dog? Ah! Oh, man. Anyways, look at how incredible this town looks. When you're not being startled by dogs, it is so Peaceful. We're actually staying up on this hill. We got a little cabin up there. I'm gonna show you guys in just a little bit. First, I'm having too much fun checking out all these old buildings. And the most famous of these old buildings is just down this road. While Pioch is pretty darn remote today, it just sits out here in eastern Nevada along the side of Highway 93. Remember that back in the day, before there even was a Las Vegas, when Nevada was very sparsely populated, when there were 10,000 people living here, this was like a metropolis. Which is why, just alongside of this old carriage route, in what was then a busy and popular part of town, they built these old buildings. The more famous of the two is this one, the old Lincoln County Courthouse, better known as the Million Dollar Courthouse, but we'll come back to that. And then in 1895, it got a new neighbor, the Mountain View Hotel. Dude, look at that thing, George. That thing is leaning over all kind of ways. This thing looks like Pippi Longstocking's house. It's the Villa Villa Coola. Mr. Nelson! This is incredible. I kind of wish we could stay in here now. Who knows what secrets it holds. Look, here's the sign right here. Built in 1895 by the Ely Valley mines to house their guests. Ooh, and lays claim to such overnight guests as Herbert Hoover, Nell Merbarger, I don't know, that famous author of the Old West, okay. And other notables. Dude, look at this old fridge. Look at this old Westinghouse refrigerator. This is the kind you don't want to lock yourself into. Mm, looks like somebody spilled their Diet Coke. Oh my gosh, look at this. It's an authentic Old West Plunger. Come out to P.O. and plunge yourself into history. Dude, that Mountain View Hotel is one of the coolest, wickedest, hauntedest looking. Hauntedest? Is that a word? Just most excellent looking building. I cannot tell you how bad I'd like to spend the night in there. And it's weird because it's very quiet out here. You know, it's just a little bit of a breeze, a very cold breeze. Ah, the strangest feeling, dude, the strangest sensation of being watched from these windows, specifically from these windows right here. And I'll tell you what, I had a brand new battery in this camera a couple seconds ago and it started wigging out, just freaking out. 
just dropping out, you know, on power and stuff. So I don't know much about the afterlife because I've never been there. And technological glitches can be normal, but I don't know, some of you out there might uh, might believe that's paranormal. Anyway, look at this. Across this little courtyard here, we have the big one. It's the most famous building in Pioch. And no, I'm not talking about the Sinclair gas station. It's the million dollar courthouse. The same old story every time. The local leaders, the aldermen, the mayor, the board of supervisors, they would always think their silver mining or gold mining boom towns were going to be the next San Francisco. And I mean, to be fair, as you can see up there on the mountains, there's all kinds of mining going on and each one of the surrounding hills. Pioch is actually nestling into a little crack between all these or Bering Hill. So of course, they lobbied to be the county seat as the biggest community in the area. That brings in a little government revenue, some government jobs. And in keeping with wanting to be the big San Francisco of Nevada, they built themselves a fine courthouse starting in the 1870s. This is back when buildings cost, you know, pretty much nothing compared to what they cost today. I mean, most miners were building their shacks out of rocks and old boxes. If you had enough money, you could build a building out of wood, but lumber is expensive out in Nevada. Not a lot of pine trees up here. But if you really wanted to be fancy in the 1870s, you would build your building out of the futuristic fireproof brick. And that's what they decided to do here, to build themselves a high-toned, fancy courthouse that came with a very big budget for the time of $26,400 to build this brick and stone beauty. At least that was the initial budget when they started constructing and planning this in 1872. Unfortunately, some of the first people building this place broke the contract. They had to get new contractors in here and the cost eventually boomed and bloomed up to $75,000, which were paid in bonds. And then of course, those bonds had to be paid off by even more bonds. They just keep passing the debt down. And by the time they had paid off all the bonds and all the debts as far away as 1909, so 40 years later almost, the total cost was somewhere around $800,000, leading to the nickname the Million Dollar Courthouse. And by the way, that million dollars back then is worth around something like $30 million today. And although I'm sure the courthouse was large and impressive for the time, $30 million for a little brick building like this, that's a lot of money, even for 2024. Well, at least in Nevada, in Southern California, where I'm from, you could build maybe that for $30 million. Man, look at this building. That certainly is impressive and it's reputed to be haunted. They've had several ghost television shows out here and at the Overland Hotel down there. Could be wrong, but I think we're looking at the back of some jail cells right here. Now in the summer, as I mentioned, they have all kinds of events and different stuff. And uh, even maybe sometimes on the weekends, or if you get lucky, the courthouse will be open for you. Unfortunately, Pioch is up at over 6,000 foot of elevation out here in Nevada and very remote. And so from October 1st to May 1st, the courthouse is pretty much just always closed. As you can see through the windows, they got all kinds of displays in there. They got little tea lights. They're ready to do all kinds of events. We couldn't uh, find the right person to bribe or beg or borrow or steal the key from. So we're locked out at the moment. But I figure since I never know I'm gonna come back this way. I might as well get out and experience what I can of the million dollar courthouse. Man, look at this. This is an amazing sign. Look at this old highway sign. I don't know where they dug this gem out of, but look at that. Look at the miles on it. Someone could probably figure it out by looking at all the different miles. You got Ely on there, Tonopah. I love that danger drive slow. Atlanta, must be Atlanta, Nevada, obviously. Geyser. Uh, Wilson Creek. This is confusing. Wait, Atlanta this way, Atlanta this way. And then there's Pioch right up on top. And this little yard between this and the Mountain View Hotel. They got a little plaque, uh, E. Clampus Avitus. A uh, plaque about the Lincoln County Courthouse and the cost of it. Look at this. Like I was saying, there's just all kinds of old machinery out here. I think the mines were active up until about the First World War. That was usually the case. Most mining towns kind of limped along through the war, maybe into the 20s, a little bit of revival, but during the First World War and the second especially, there were so many scrap drives for the war effort that lots of state and local governments were just taking old buildings and knocking them down. They were even recycling a lot of bricks during that time, and so whole ghost towns have disappeared, especially in the 19-teens and the 1940s. Luckily, apparently, just enough people stayed out in Pioch to preserve its history, and they've done a really good job of making this a cool tourist attraction. It's too bad it's not open at the moment. Gosh, I really just feel like someone's watching me. 
weird. Anyway, there's one other thing here that is really excellent. Look at this bucket right here. This is not your typical ore bucket. This is a Skyway bucket for ore. So that's the stuff you'd mine out of the mountain and then process obviously into silver and whatever. But look at this. This was linked to an aerial tramway and we actually saw a glimpse of it at the beginning of this video. I'm hop in the car now and go take a closer look. The car, by the way, that George and Tyler have been hiding in because of the cold. Just take one last loving look here at the million dollar courthouse. Give you a little uh, context for it coming in down the highway. Then downtown P.O. which is just over there and you see that big hill. You had all kinds of silver mining going on up there and it's at the foot of that hill, sort of over on the left. That's where we're going next. All right, we've now come about halfway up that hill. As you can see way up there, there's all kinds of mining remnants, tailing piles, but most of this is private homes now and sort of off limits to us. The big mining operations are closed, private. Look at this. But look at this, just above town, right off the side of US 93 right here, even right along the side of the highway are all kinds of remnants of the mining days. Look at this huge pit right here. It's all closed off with barbed wire. That is the entrance to an old shaft. Oh yeah, you got the orange sign here. Danger, unsafe mine. Ooh, and it looks like that shaft is going down right underneath where we're at. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't come up here just for the shaft. Check this out. Up on the hill here are the remnants of the Pioch Aerial Tramway, rather than laying rails over all these hills to get to where they would either process the ore or ship it out on one of the many railroads that ended up in Pioch, they decided to bring the ore down from the mountain up there to this little aerial tramway station and load it into some of those buckets we were looking at earlier, right down here. So you see that big wheel right there? That is what is powering or actually turning the giant cable. So this must have been the engine house over here. You can see just giant pieces of this thing all over the place. Look at that. The cable is still right there, right in the center of your screen, going around that giant wheel there. And I don't know if you can tell, but they are stretching out over the mountain yonder. The million dollar courthouse is right about there. Most of downtown's right here. And the cables are going up over this hill. I think this is called Lime Hill. I don't know what the rest of this is called. Up over this hill, all the way to the south side of town, up over Boot Hill where we were earlier. I don't know if you guys noticed back then. You see what's left of like concrete structures here as they would get the ore down. I don't know how they would actually load it in the buckets here on these cables. So it looks like there's some kind of chute at the bottom of this. Maybe they loading them here and push it down there. I don't, I don't know. I'd, I'd really be interested in finding out. Clearly a lot of the structures that were here have fallen away over time. Oh man, look at that ladder right there. Tyler, I think this ladder might be unsafe, dude. I know you're thinking about it. Don't try it. I won't. All right, we can kind of see a little trail leading off towards the, what's left of the cable strung out over there. And there's all kinds of mine shafts on this hill. We're going to see if there's a path, see if we can get closer or not. See, Pioch is a ghost town but it's not that much of a ghost town. Like there's enough people living here where you don't want to like cross over like barbed wire fences or something and have a local come out and get angry. And what are you doing? Chewing on some tar. <sighs> okay, it looks like there's some kind of trail, but look at this up on the saddle here. Look at that view. That's incredible. Look at, look at how much nothing. That gives you guys an idea of just how remote Pioch is these days. Not a target in sight. Not even a Walmart in sight, dude. Weird. Right, there's the tramway uh, station or engine house or whatever it is. Look at this, more mine shafts. Oh yeah, dude, that's not safe. Right there. Ooh. Holy moly. You know people died down there, bro. Oh crap. That's a classic, dude. Hang on, George has to do the classic. I'm gonna throw a rock down there, see if you can hear it. That was very anticlimactic. <laughs> All right, we have no idea whether we're gonna get scolded or not for doing this, but we're taking, the, taking a little hike down here, see if we can get a better look at those cables. Whoa, this whole mountain's covered in holes, Tyler. Careful, they're blasting! Oh, yeah. There you go. Can you see those uh, buckets suspended there in space? That is cool. All right, making our way along the mountain. Oh, yeah, look backwards. You can see the uh, little station back there. See the car on the highway, how tiny it looks now? 
And then those cables are coming all along here, past the town. And uh-oh, it looks like someone spilled their bucket. It occurs to me that uh, this must have been squeaking and grinding and carrying ore here all across this town and over the hills for years and years. Boy, I'm out of breath, up over 6,000 feet. And if you lived here, this was probably a constant, this little skyway moving overhead. But then I just realized like one day the mines played out and this thing stopped. And that must have been a weird day for the little town of Pioch. Whew, the towers up here are getting a little shorter. We're close to the top, we're close. I didn't know we were going mountain climbing today, but at least it's keeping us warm. Oh yeah, look at this, we've got to the point now where you can actually reach out and touch the cables. They are so low to the top of the hill. We've got a bucket up here right near the very apex. We gotta check out this view. Whoa, and then look at that. Look at all the buckets stretching down the hill. That is a steep, steep drop. And uh, if you see those white buildings down there, that's a little storage facility right next to Boot Hill. So that's where we were when we started this adventure. And then way, way down there at the end of the line, I could see like a big mill. Oh, that's gonna be almost impossible to zoom in on, but man, they moved that thing over the map. It was worth building this tramway, I guess, to get that all out there. It's pretty awesome. You impressed, very, hey, Tyler? Very impressed. You look a little cold. I'm freezing. You enjoying it though? Yeah, I'm just, I'm freezing. You gonna remember the days we were in Pioch, dude? I don't think George will let out. me forget it. George is loving this. You loving this, George? Dude, I'm so, I'm so excited. You love it, huh? Yeah, that's great. You're happy now that you got out and hiked. I love how you got out and hiked for this, but you guys wouldn't get out of the car for the freaking million dollar courthouse. This is cooler than the courthouse. Uh, yeah, kind of. All right, we just filmed a morning announcement, which is the little vlogs for our uh, Patreon Adventurers Club members. And George slipped up and let out a swear. He said fudging, only he didn't say fudge. But we're climbing up the side of the freezing cold mountain up here because look at this. Finally a shaft with no fence around it. Finally we can get in one of the shafts, guys. Oh, it's just a snow hole. It's just a snow hole, George. Sorry, man. I was gonna make a snowball and throw it at Tyler, but I think that would end the friendship. Oh, dude, it is cold. Very windy. Very cold. Dude, look how steep that is, George. Look at the, yeah, the cables going down there. See the mill that it's going to? Yeah, it's scary. That is wild, dude. Right, it's actually kind of scary being up right now. Hey, if they invented a zip line, some shaky footage right here. If they invented a zip line that would go down there, would you do it? Nope. Why? I'm scared. Well, well, at least you're honest. All right, that's, uh, watch out, watch out. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Poopy, poopy. I think that's about it for the attractions of this mountain right here there's a little bit more stuff to look at in downtown some old buildings but uh we're gonna hike back down and get to it all right heading down this trail like the fellowship of the ring back down to the car Ow. this trail rocks get it <laughs> back down here on the road back into town though this is why i love the back roads look at this old building here Channel of Light Truth Centers Incorporated. Had a lovely view above town from here. And then across the street, there's this little park, a heritage park. Nice little gazebo, a couple of trees. But the interesting part is this. Look at this, this little trestle here with all kinds of ore cars on it. And there's some kind of little pond right here. And look at the stones all around it. You see those holes? Those were made by various old fashioned drills back in the mining days. Sometimes they would have drilling competitions. They have a stone like this at Knott's Berry Farm from an old rhyolite one or tonopah. That's the sort of hole they would make. Stick a stick of dynamite in it and run for your life. Looks like normally there might be a little running water coming out of this uh, fake looking mine shaft. Kind of a neat little representation of what an old mine shaft would be like and the ore carts would come out along these rails. Look at this one's got a little crane right here. This is pretty neat. I, I've always wanted to own an old ore cart like that but they are very heavy. Most of them were scrapped back in the day. And what was left out in the desert is either protected now, you know, archeological sites or privately owned. And they are expensive to purchase. You wouldn't believe it, like thousands of dollars sometimes. It's kind of hard to believe, but there's actually an ore cart collecting market and people will bid up various different kinds of ore carts. Who knew? All right, we're driving down the hill now, driving back through Pioch. We're gonna see if we can get closer to that mill where the ore cars were going. All right, it took a while, but I think we found the right dirt road all right dude 
we did it. We found it. There's no signs to get down here. It's just down this random dirt road from Pioch. This is some kind of old mill, old smelter, old something. You can see there's a very big industrial building back there. There's no trespassing. Passing, so we're not going to go down there on foot as much as I would like to. I was telling them I, I wish like a sheriff or somebody would stop by we could chat with and just see if we're allowed to walk a little bit closer. You could see the uh, the big smokestack over there. I wish I had any idea what the name of that mill or whatever it is, uh, what, it, what it was called. It's funny down here I'm looking at the, uh, the fence. It's actually made up of that same cable from the tramway. And it's hard to see, but down in the valley, I don't know, maybe if we zoom all the way in there, can you see those towers? The cable is actually running along that little valley down towards one of the sides of that big industrial building. That's the mountain we were parked in front of. We climbed up the hill in front of it, and that cable comes down a long, long, long ways to get over here. So that's pretty impressive. I love being out in places like this where you're really getting you know, so close to history, you're walking in the footsteps. It's just unfortunate that there's uh, no information down here, no signs. All I can ever think when I see buildings like this just left to sit here is like, man, they could make some cool hipster burger places in that, make a little mall out of it. Someone could make a house out of this. Pretty darn cool. All right, well, we're gonna head back up into town, but I should mention, you remember the million dollar courthouse? Well, that was only in service until the 1930s before it was too dilapidated to run as a courthouse. And then check this out sort of along the uh, bottom of the hills here where P.O.H. proper is kind of up in that cleft. You've got the fancy 1938 Lincoln County Courthouse. I think they still use this to this day. This is cool too, because right across the parking lot is Old Faithful, number 279. That is super cool, dude. Something fun to look at. Nothing like seeing an old steam engine out here from one of the railroads of P.O.H. Yeah, there were several. I'm no foamer, as crazy railroad fans are called. But if you look at this sign, there's information on about four different small railroads that either came through P.O.H. or were built here for the mining operations. And apparently Old Faithful is all that's left because I haven't seen any other steam locomotives in town. I just love doing like small back roads, finding little towns like this, exploring all the weird little treasures. And there's so many cool little buildings. I mean, look at this one. The fastest gas in the West. It's for sale if you want them. Look at that. Or look at this, dude. I don't know if they still use this thing. I somehow doubt it. I believe we saw a much newer elementary school as we were driving into town last night, sort of the flat part. But look at the old Pioch Elementary School. A nice little fenced-in yard over here. Apparently it's home of the tigers. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that tiger mascot right there. Nice little mural. Okay, there's a sign out here. It says it was opened in 1909. The sign says, at first, the four main rooms with four teachers each teaching two classes to a room was the norm. That's a very confusing sentence. What does it say? At first, the four main rooms with four teachers teaching two classes to a room was the norm. I still kind of don't understand <laughs> what that means, but it said that the school eventually diminished. They moved the school elsewhere. But at least according to the sign, before the school was closed, they built on this big gymnasium, and the sign says it's still the site of many community events. Doesn't look like much is going on right now, but good news, it's a drug-free zone. Yeah, this looks haunted. The Mountain View Hotel up there, that, felt haunted. This looks haunted. Anyway, this is very close to a place called Cathedral Gorge State Park. You're sort of in the Great Basin area out here, close to the border of Utah. There's all kinds of RV parks and little rental cabins here. Couple of little mom and pop looking motels that we didn't see online before we got here. We actually got an Airbnb up on this hill over here, just close to downtown's over this way. We got an Airbnb up here. I want to show you in a little bit. And in all my travels, I have actually never used that app before. Um, this is my first experience with it, and I am pretty happy. Basically, you just cruise up back towards Main Street, but you hook a right turn at the Overland Saloon right here. Take a ride past the Meadow Valley Market, which, by the way, inside has got a lot of stuff. Like, you don't need to bring supplies with you. They got a great market here in Pioch, including uh, t-shirts. They got some t-shirts in there. And quickly, right across the street, look at this. It's the old Pioch Fire Station. The t-shirts inside there are apparently funding the restoration. Look at that old bell. This is a tiny little station. Anyway, you keep cruising up this road past the million dollar courthouse and then pretty much literally just up behind it and the Sinclair station over here. Look at that. The courthouse is right down there. Like I was saying, you just cruise up here and right on this little hill is our accommodation. Tyler, George, and I 
Split this Airbnb. I'd love to shout them out, but they don't have like a website or anything. Wait, we're splitting this? And dude, this is almost too much cabin for just three dudes. Check this place out. Dude, look at this. Look at the size of this cabin over here. When we saw it, it was like little cabin, four bedrooms, couple of bathrooms. That'll be cool. Didn't expect it to be ginormous. There's a whole living room area right here. We were hanging out. We were watching YouTube videos last night. Random Land, of course. Why watch the rest when you can watch the best, right, Tyler? Yeah. Tyler's going to start his channel very soon. It blew me out of the water. Working on it. Hit that subscribe button. Working on your channel? Yep. Look at this. We got George over here without a hat on. That's weird. In the kitchen. He was trying to show us his jerky, but we already saw that when we were at the Alien Jerky. There's a full kitchen in here, a fridge, a freezer. We got all kinds of supplies. We got salsa. We got Verde, we got Salsa Verde, and look at the view. That's the view out of the front window. You can see the Million Dollar Courthouse. You can't quite see downtown, but you get this beautiful view over the valley. We were watching the snow out there earlier. Bunch of weird antlers on the wall. Apparently this place is very popular with hunters, so I don't know how to shout them out, but if you look on Airbnb for Pioch, this place popped up for me. Look at this, don't tell George. They got a bathroom down here, right? A little laundry room. Then if you go down here, you got George's room. If, we, if we're careful, we might be able to see George's underwear. Oh, hey, George! Hey, man! Just checking out the, the bed. Checking out the in the bathtub. Okay, see ya. Another little room over here. This place is pretty cozy, dude. Nice little rooms. And then up the stairs, Tyler and I are uh, in the little attic rooms up here. You don't want to see Tyler's underwear, trust me. And there's a toilet room. Then across the hallway... There's a bathtub room. I took a bath in there last night, a bubble bath. And that's it. We have now seen most of Pioch, Nevada, all that we could see in one day. We're just going to have some grub now, let the sun go down, and then we'll, uh, we'll bid you adieu in a minute. Well, as you can see, night has fallen on Pioch. The neon is looking good. Apparently, there's a pub crawl going on in here tonight. You know what? It was kind of a long adventure today, but it was a good adventure. Pioch turned out to be a lot of fun. There was a lot to explore out here. Kind of a lot to see and do. It filled up a whole day, that's for sure. And the best part is we can easily come back and spend a whole other day here doing the same stuff because these guys were hiding in the car most of the time. Come back when it's a little less windy. I was fine. I was just keeping Tyler company. All right, let's say we get the heck out of here and go back to the cabin. It's weird being out uh, so close to Area 51. George and I haven't been out there for like 10 years, man. But it's cool coming to the cabin. Just weird knowing you're so close. Strange thinking about what could be up there, what could be out there in the skies, and what could be watching us. Are you going to bed, George? See you in the morning. All right, dude, we better head upstairs, dude. Check out at 11, dude. Time for sleep. <sighs> Time to hit the sack. All right. Hey, good night, bro. Hey, see ya. Good night. All right. Finally. <sighs> hey, Tyler. Good night, bro. Good night, bro. Oh. Hey, George. Good night, George. Shut up. We've done our duty. Go home and sleep well. Our demo reel. Hello, uh, Sir Peter Jackson. I think he's a sir. If not, you should be, sir. Is he British? Hello, he's New Zealand, close oh. enough. Peter Jackson, this is our demo tape. Um, you could make us bigger, we could be wizards, you can make us little, we could be hobbits, but we want to show you how we walk. I don't so, want to be a hobbit. if you ever film another, you could be a, a dwarf or a wizard or a man of Gondor. All right, here we go. Peter Jackson, this is, this is our walking audition. Okay, you guys first. Alright, here we go. Alright. Heading down this trail like the Fellowship of the Ring. Back down to the car. Stop. 
see then we run back to the camera to get the camera um but if if you didn't call cut obviously we would keep walking and um and we could do that all day we could wear hobbit feet boots so you know you could put us in the background of a beatles documentary we're down for anything we just want to work with you sir peter that's all we're saying we want to collab you see then there was another example of us walking and me coming back to retrieve the camera so you know maybe you could hire us as cameraman or camera picker uppers we do it all full service random land Hey, we didn't really go to bed. We weren't really sleeping. It was like a skit. Don't believe everything you see on TV, kids. It's Friday Night Live. Huh? <sighs> Somebody spilled my bucket!